You first have to understand the noise, the, the crowd. I could hear that they were close onto the road, and, and not just because I had great hearing to make up for my blind eyes. I mean, this was a roar. People cheering and clapping and singing. As it got closer, I, I, I tried to listen as carefully as I could, see if I could make out what they were saying. I knew that they were coming my way. See, some of us sat by the main gates where most of the people would come and go. I know people by how they walk, whether they drag their feet or not. And every day I just sat there and waited for mercy. But I, all I could do was listen. Suddenly I realized that they cheered for him. Some grumbled even speaking his name. Others said he was the Messiah. But a handful of them had, had witnessed him healing people. I crawled closer to the road, afraid that I might be trampled. I, I could hear that there were a lot of people coming. Is that him? Is that the teacher? Anyone tell me? Is it him? And someone said, yes, it was Jesus. And to this day, I, I can't explain it, but I just yelled. I yelled louder than I had ever yelled. Son of David, have mercy on me. He heard me and he he came over where I was and asked what I wanted to see. And then everything I had always hoped to lay my eyes on was there before me. I followed him that day, and the next day, and the next day. What amazed me was, it seemed like the people that could see the best were the most blind. As for who I say he is, one day, I was yelling for him to heal me. Now, here we are in Jerusalem, yelling to all those who have ears to hear that he is Hosanna in the highest. He is the Messiah. The blind baker of Jericho had a name, at least in a way he did. Bartimaeus they called him, according to the account in Mark 10. However, Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. So this tells us that no one really knew his name, only that his father was a man known to some. Bartimaeus was blind. In a culture, no options existed for a blind adult other than to beg. Perhaps someone helped him to his begging place each day. We don't know. We may assume that he was unwashed, that he needed a haircut last year, and that he had not bathed in a memory. By any standards of the day, his situation was clearly hopeless. Maybe so, but I'd like to think of him as the smartest man in town. But Bartimaeus knew who Jesus was, the son of David. He was a messianic name for the Lord. How did the blind beggar know this? I would be willing to bet a month's salary that he learned about Jesus by listening. A beggar by the roadside is part of the landscape to most people, a potted plant if you will. So he sat there in his dark silence and heard people talking. For three years he heard reports of Jesus' ministry, of his teaching, of his healings, his interactions with the so-called powers that be, and of his courageous rebuke of the religious big shots. As he listened, Bartimaeus came to the same conclusion a lot of the talkers did. Jesus was the divinely promised and long-awaited Son of God, the Messiah, the Son of David. 
And so he called on Jesus for mercy. Bartimaeus sees the first opportunity he had to call on Jesus without knowing it would be his last. The Lord was on his final trip through Jericho, making his last entrance into Jerusalem. Bartimaeus had no way of knowing that this would be his last opportunity to meet the Lord Jesus and have him answer his prayer. Had Bartimaeus been like some of us, he would have said, One of these days I'm going to call on Jesus, but not today. He could have reasoned that the Lord had been through Jericho numerous times before, and since he was still a young man, chances are he would be back many times. And so reasoning the way many a person does today, he would have said, One of these days I'm going to call on him. But I told you he was the smartest man in town. As soon as he heard that Jesus was there, he grabbed the opportunity and began to call out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. He can teach us a lot about prayer. This blind beggar can. He can teach us to call on Jesus when he is near. He can teach us to call on Jesus when our case is hopeless. He can teach us to keep calling when the very people who should be encouraging us are offering nothing but rebuke and discouragement. He can teach us to be bold in our praying as well as persistent. And he can teach us to be specific in our praying. The Lord says, what do you want me to do for you? Now, Jesus knew his need, that's Matthew 6, and you and I know his need. The man was blind and in a hopeless situation. He needed healing. But the question is not whether the Lord knows or we know. Did Bartimaeus know his own need? He had been praying for mercy. Mercy is a broad category and might include a number of things. Educational programs for the blind, a better begging place, protection from his tormentors, etc. So the Lord asked Bartimaeus to get specific. He said, what do you want me to do for you? The Lord is asking you and me the same question today. And why don't we tell him exactly what we need? Simply uncomplicate your prayer. I like to think of our prayers as baby talk. Now, to a loving parent, or a doting grandparent, nothing is sweeter than the babbling of an infant. In many cases, the mother knows what the baby is saying or wanting. She feeds the child, changes the diaper, picks him or her up to cuddle, or something else, and all responds to the baby's request. The same as God knows what we are saying. What will we say if we had the words? What we are feeling, how we are hurting, where we are aching, and what he wants us to do in our lives. The one thing God will not do, it appears, is from the consistent testimony of Scripture, is to force His blessings on us. He brings them right up to our door and stops. He knocks and asks permission to enter with the blessings of heaven, Revelations 3.20. He said to Jerusalem, How often would I have blessed you, like a mother hen cuddling its baby chicks, but you were unwilling. So now you are left to your own choices, and the news is not good, Matthew 23.37. And so even though he knows what things we need before we ask, Matthew 6, 8, he still waits for us to ask. What do you want me to do for you? Luke 18, 24. You have not because you have not asked. James 4, 2. So go ahead and ask. Don't complicate things. Prayer is a very powerful thing. And someone says, but what if my request is wrong and not according to God's will? And the answer is then he won't grant it. Uh, do you think he was duty-bound to grant a request that was wrong just because you asked so perfectly? Uh, there's almost no way to get it wrong if you will pray sincerely, uh, telling the Father what you are thinking, what's on your mind, worshiping and praising him. My suggestion is that you ignore those who would insist you must use certain words, uh, particular postures, their forms and formulae. Don't argue with them, but keep doing what you're doing. So I ask you, what's keeping you from praying? Always remember that although prayer is amazingly powerful, it does not have to be well articulated and formed. Uh, God wants to hear your heart because that's what he knows best. Uh, my friends, again, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, thus far, we have only one subscriber to our Patreon, and honestly, I'd expected the Patreon and the merch channel to do much better. Um, the most uncomfortable part of this job is asking for donations. Uh, however, I need to be honest with you, I need your help. Um, like I've said so many times, even a dollar a month adds up. Um, this is now the way that I intend to support my family. So if you find it in your heart to donate to our channel, please do. As a patron, I will also be giving out personal contact information for those struggling in darkness that need support. 
I want this channel to be more than simply informational. As Christians, it should be personal. Uh, so if you have suggestions, no matter how outside the box, uh, please let me know in comments. And again, thank you for listening. Until next time, God bless you and your families.